Androgene 3 by Magdalena Abakanovitz. And so how you look at this, it's the same piece. So it's just showing you uh, a view from the front and then a view from more of like this side. So you can see it because it is so different when you're just seeing it from one particular direction. It has a completely different feel about it from the other. So I wanted to include this quote by Magdalena. I, I'm not asking you to memorize it at all, but I thought it really did give a good indication of her art and like the making of the art. So she says, becoming between myself and the material with which I create, no tool intervenes. I select it with my hands. I shape it with my hands and my hands transmit energy to it. In translating idea into form, they always pass on to it something that eludes conceptualization. They reveal the unconscious. So again, she's making this art with her hands. And while she may think she's making one thing, her what's inside, like that unconscious, you know, the feelings, whatever maybe she's suppressing or you know, doesn't realize that's in there in her mind and, and that in her heart comes out into her hands and then transfers onto the art piece. So uh, context. So now you get to see, well, what's inside there that is probably influencing then, you know, being transferred into her hands. It all really begins when she's a young girl. Uh, in World War II, Magdalena saw, and she's living in Poland, a German soldier who supposedly was drunk just storms into her house and attacks her mother and ends up shooting her mother and her mother's arm gets shot off. That would be so traumatic. Now her mother survives, but you know, during this time period in war and the Soviets kind of invading her small town in Poland, her family then to survive flees to Warsaw, which is probably about 200 miles away or so from their small town. And they have, you know, they're leaving everything behind, friends, maybe other family, their possessions, they're also leaving behind their identity because they were a pretty well-off family. Um, and when they're in Poland, communist Poland, nobility, the wealthy, you know, the aristocratic kind of elite are really not looked upon well. Uh, they're the enemy. And so they change their identity from having a lot or having what is seen to be a lot. And now, becoming like a very much a working class family. And so she worked as a nursing assistant in the hospital, mostly caring for the wounded soldiers. So I'm sure there too, she sees a lot of hardship and suffering uh, and that would make such an impact on her. And she's like your age when she's working in the hospital, you know, teenager. And then the other thing I think that affected her, and I kind of relate to this because I grew up in an area where I would go out and just kind of hang out in the nature and, and that, and she would play in the forest and just experiment with natural materials, like pick up you know, dirt and sticks and twigs and, and plant life and kind of make things from that. And that deeply impacted her you know, in, in a very impressionable time period of her life. And I think it was probably during a time too when she felt more free and, you know, the troubles of her later years aren't yet there. So there's very positive associations with that natural material as well. Now content, I, I hope when you're looking at the, the two views of this, especially the one on the top, you get the sense of a body and in fact, Magdalena often will be portraying the human body in her art. And it's all, a lot of times it's pretty genderless, androgynous. And so she's focusing in on just the human experience and feelings and that not a particular type of person's 
it's that universal sense of feelings. She's always using natural materials as well. So this will use like burlap and wood and nails and string, but the main materials are that burlap and wood. And what she does is she creates her figures, you know, by having this burlap, you know, think of burlap like a, uh, a potato sack or something, a little rough fabric. And she dips the burlap strips and string into resin, which is going to harden and, and be moldable. And when it cools and hardens, it will stay in one place. So that's what gives it its structure uh, after she presses it into a plaster mold that she creates. Um, and the top picture, the view of it from that way, it looks like the person is ultimately whole. Maybe it has his head down or her head down, but you don't see a head. You see a very indentation you know, with the spine. You see a lot of cracks in the image. There's no clothes. You feel like the figure is nude and therefore vulnerable. I kind of get a sense of age as well because of the cracks in that. And then if you look around when you walk around it and, and be kind of shocked where it's like, whoa, it doesn't have a front. There's no head. It almost doesn't look human there when you're looking at it from in the lower picture. And you can't help but just go back to her experience, like seeing her mom so traumatically injured. Um, I'm sure she saw a lot in the hospital. And, and in fact, the wood to me looks a lot like stretcher you know, like a stretcher that you would carry the wounded into a hospital. Some even say that because they're, the wooden posts are bound with fabric on the end, that it even might be a reference to amputation and trying like to tie a tourniquet around, you know, the, the wounded area. So, you know, you just feel that missing something. And it's not even just body parts missing. It's like this soul or, or feeling of security or her identity, something is missing. And so with her pieces a lot, and especially this one, the empty or negative space is as significant as the positive space. So the emptiness communicates meaning uh, with that. So, you know, she's, and I, I think to think about it as well, the natural materials also are very powerful express, ex, in expressing emotion. You know, think back to Rotgen Pieta and the wood of that. It, it's so powerful and expressor of emotion. And the same thing here, even though you don't see a face, you feel because of the body language, the hunched over the cracks, you know, uh, it definitely is expressive. Okay, uh, here are just some other pieces that she has done. Um, Body is again up on top, and in fact, down below, and I know they might look like potatoes to you, but those are very abstract references to human beings. And I, I like oftentimes that she'll put people together and they're all very individualized because all the the texture of each figure is individualized no two are alike in the cracks and the way the burlap curls and, and whatnot or size in terms of the, fig, the image down on the bottom right but they all have a unity to them it's, you know like the one on the top they all look the same height they're all missing a head but they're also individual and you just feel that sense that she is trying to express the human condition. And, and that's why there's no gender. Like everybody is going through difficult times. The 20th century, you know, here, World War II, we're like treating humanity as expendable. We're killing each other. Um, we're faceless because everything's so busy. And, you know, there's so many issues of the 20th century that you could connect to how her art looks. And then you also then can attach the very personal experiences into it as well. So she, I think she's just a really powerful, powerful artist. Um, and I like this quote. And if you can just remember the essence of it, like her hands are transmitting energy and shaping the material with her hands that she's really connecting and getting her personal 
feelings and experience into the piece. So for formal qualities and function then, uh, function, I haven't get to that in this. I, I, well, no, let's do it now. Social commentary, for sure. And then for formal quality texture, and I think the texture of the wood, the texture of the burlap helps to communicate emotion. And then also space here, the negative space, again, being as communicative of meaning and emotion and loss, I think space is one thing we can't avoid either. So it's an interesting, like, um, we've looked at so many different bodies in sculpture and in painting, but sculpture in particular. This is an interesting uh, turn of events in the art world here with Magdalena and a really powerful one as well.